Welcome to The Spotlight, the podcast where veterans and military spouses connect and share how their military experience has transformed their lives and their businesses. Here's your host, Bob Loudon. Hey, this is your host, Bob Loudon, founder of the Veteran Crowd Network, the network that brings veterans and veteran-led businesses together with each other and the resources they need to prosper. And you are tuning into the spotlight. And now a word about a Veteran Crowd Spotlight partner, Fund the First. Fund the First is the nation's leading crowdfunding platform for first responders, military, and medical professionals. Thanks to a partnership with IDME, Fund the First is able to combat fraud and scams to ensure donors that money is going to a verified and trusted source. Visit fundthefirst.com for more details. Fund the First, crowdfunding for our nation's heroes. Hey, welcome everybody. This is Bob Loudon, host of The Spotlight, and I am very thrilled today to have as our guest two folks that I hope both will be setting a world's record about 10 days from now. I have with me Caitlin Hernandez. She is a captain, a commander of the 717th EOD Company at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and also our friend Sean Matson former Navy SEAL and fellow VMI graduate. Hey, Caitlin and Sean, welcome to the program. Thanks for being with me today. Thanks, Thank Bob. You. Appreciate it. Now, you guys have not met, uh, and so I've kind of uh, arranged this thing, but uh, Sean, why don't you just take a second and talk about what's happening and where on April the 3rd? Yeah, so April 3rd, uh, we are both uh, going to be strapping on an 80-pound EOD bomb suit and uh, running one mile uh, to break the male and female world records. So it's gonna be at George Mason University and we are both raising money for uh, an amazing organization called Get Headstrong. They help veterans with uh, the silent killers, you know, suicidal, uh, PTSD, TBIs, and kind of um, uh, all the things that, you know, well, obviously a lot of EOD guys, uh, go through as well as a lot of veterans, um, you know, from these traumatic injuries um, and, and things. So we're, that's what we've got going on and we're looking forward to it. Okay. Hey, hey, Caitlin, what is the women's world record time for running a mile in the bomb suit? Uh, currently the world record is at 1106 set by my friend Ashley Sorensen me and her used to play rugby together uh, so she said she was going to be coming out for the race so I'm looking forward to seeing her too. How did you know her and this sounds like a, a, a friendly rivalry here. <laughs> yeah so uh, I, when I PCS to Hawaii she was my sponsor so she kind of took me under her wing uh, she was the one that introduced me to rugby uh, she was she was a badass she's oh gosh um, she's awesome but she had set the record when we were in Hawaii and I always admired her for it and you know a few years later I saw it pop up on my social media to give it a try and I was like I think I could do it so I actually reached out to Ashley and we've been under correspondence since then so it's been good. Well uh, it just it, it sounds really exciting to me what you guys are doing. Sean tried to do this Two years ago, Sean, right? Yeah, you you yep. you made an attempt two years ago, and I think you went out fast, but the uh, <laughs> uh, the suit jumped on your back in the last lap or so, right? Yeah, it sure did. Uh, so you know, we had it set. There was two other guys that were attempting it, a uh, firefighter, and then actually one of my employees at the time. Um, and you know, I had this plan in my my head. I you know, I knew exactly my pace that I needed to hit. But as soon as I hit start, I just took off sprinting and um, the, ultimately my heart rate pegged. I think my first lap was in like one, 120, 130 uh, in that first lap. And, and ultimately I just couldn't keep the pace and on lap three I had to walk. Uh, and so extremely humbling experience because all my pre-runs had been below the, uh, the record. So I, I went in confident that I could do it and then just had a plan and you know, they always tell us in the military, you know, uh, plan a dive, dive a plan. And I definitely did not do that. And I just, I completely just. And so Caitlin, uh, uh, last year before the swing was canceled, I had volunteered to be sort of the pace man for Sean. 
And, and today I can't do the pace man thing, but Sean, I've seen some very interesting video of you practicing recently running around your neighborhood in the bomb suit, dragging a sled. Caitlin, have you seen this video of him? I have. <laughs> so here's my idea, Sean. Yeah. Since I can't be your pace man, we thought we'd actually put a bomb on that sled time to go <laughs> off at the world record. There you go. What do you think? I, I drag think, that I think around. That, yeah, I think I will uh, definitely get it then, right? I think they said that's that's the worst sight to see as an EOD uh, tech outrunning you because like you know something's wrong wrong. <laughs> well, let's let's go back, uh, Caitlin. We haven't gotten to meet you before. Tell us a little bit about where you grew up and how did you end up uh, joining the United States Army. So I'm from Buffalo, New York, upstate, um, and I don't have any immediate family in the military. And I was going to SUNY Brockport, which is in upstate New York. And I was walking by a recruiter. He had his table out and he was like, hey, come over here and do this pull-up challenge and get this free t-shirt. And I was like, okay. So I did the pull-up challenge, got my t-shirt. And then he basically said, you're perfect for the military sign here. And without hesitation, I was like, signed off and the rest is history. <laughs> did you join ROTC at that point? I did. You did. So uh, do you think you found a home in the army? Absolutely. Um, the military has been amazing for me during college when I was doing ROTC, I was also doing sports and I love them equally as much. My coach and my uh, primary military professor would always sit down and they would divide my weekends up. And one weekend I'd be gone on an FTX for the army. And then the next weekend I'd have home games. So college was fun, but definitely the army has definitely made me at home. And the, and the sports was rugby. Uh, during college, I played lacrosse and ran uh, indoor track. Okay. And college actually got me into rugby. What was your track event? I did open four, four by four, pole vault, a little bit of everything, but. <laughs> did they have a pentathlon or something in college for women? They did. Uh, unfortunately, by the end of my indoor track season, lacrosse was starting. So lacrosse was my number one. So I was always trying to right towards the end, trying to, you know, sometimes get out of things for track so I could just start my lacrosse season. <laughs> okay. And Sean, you were an athlete a little bit in college too, right? Yeah. If great. you could uh, call it college, right? We went to college. <laughs> Institution, <laughs> um, higher learning. Uh, swimmer. So I, I swam at VMI, um, grew up swimming, uh, about eighth grade, made the transition out of playing all the other sports, football, basketball, and others. Cause honestly, I was horrible at them and, and I knew I was not going to make any career out of them. So, uh, stuck with swimming and then really, uh, devoted, you know, all of high school to all year swimming. And, and then, you know, obviously got, uh, to go to VMI and swim there as well. Hey, so, uh, Caitlin, back to you. Uh, tell us a little bit about what an EOD company does. I mean, I, like I was telling you before the program, I was on the, uh, the analog army long ago, was an engineer. We used to blow things up, but you've got a very specialized job. Uh, yes, we do. Uh, this year, so I've been in command almost two years now. It's been amazing. It's the best job in the world. And I'm, I'm successful because of my guys. Um, they, they train so hard and we have a full gamut of intricate details that we need to constantly be paying attention to. And we do everything from local response. Um, we'll get calls randomly around uh, the local area um, to go respond to calls. We also do a lot of uh, VIP missions, very important person missions. Um, so anytime the president or vice president, anytime they travel, we have a team that goes with them. This year, we also had two different rotations into Africa, um, all came home safe. So it's, it's a full spectrum of operations that we do, so. Very interesting. And Sean, you've been to Africa, I think, a little bit when you were in, in the SEAL teams. That's correct. Yeah, I got to do uh, two, well, two uh, deployments. So uh, one to uh, Chad and then Nigeria. And then I also got to do a presidential detail down in South Africa as well. So uh, that was that was definitely the highlight of, of the trips to Africa. 
So, uh, Sean, you know, we talked, I was joking a little bit about your training, but, you know, what have you done to sort of get ready for this event? And how do you feel going into it? I mean, it's 10 days. I'm kind of curious what your routine will be between now and April the 3rd also as you get ready for this. So for me, this is my, this is going to be my last hard week of really training. Um, and I've got one more um, run. I'm going to do Thursday morning with the suit on um, and really working to dial in that, that pace. Um, and so this week for me is, this is my last hard week. And then I'm going to, I mean, I'm still going to work out next week, but for the most part, my, my workout intensity is going to drop. So I'll taper off, um, and get a, and get some rest in and, and everything. Um, the other thing is, is the next two weeks, I'm really going to be focusing, um, on doing a lot of breathing, uh, work. So I do one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Um, just knowing how hard my heart rate pegged on the last one. Um, and, and that breathing really kicks in. Um, so I'm going to kick, uh, so I, I set my baseline yesterday at two minutes and 20 seconds breath hold. I want to, you know, get that over three minutes and really just, you know, keep working the lungs. Cause it's going to be such a, such a drain on that <laughs> for, for the mile. So, um, but yeah, um, uh, so that's really, you know, prep work for that. Um, I've been doing a lot of weight, um, really working upper back trap area, uh, lower back, obviously my legs for strength. Um, you know, the, 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 um, I have a buddy of mine who's a strength and fitness coach, uh, army guy was, a, uh, in the army. Um, he's been putting together my plan and, and just being, absolutely brutal he'll usually send me a text message and just like enjoy <laughs> and I'm like i'll read it and i'm like oh <laughs> man all right thanks so hey, well, this is this is good that you're still young caitlin tell us tell, you know i have i've also seen some video of you running in the uh suit and uh you've got a pretty rigorous workout routine yourself i think I do. So coincidentally, I'm right in the middle of the CrossFit Open, uh, which is a five week once one workout a week. So unfortunately, I've also been training for that and both are coming to a head. So, you know, next weekend, I'll have the bomb suit run and I will also have a CrossFit Open workout to, that I have to do. So as of late, my workouts have been twice a day CrossFit, um, one in the morning, get there at five 30. And then once in the evening, I'll get there about six 30. And then You're I will both run... putting me to shame. I mean, <laughs> just and no excuses. Right, Sean. Right, right. No excuses. Gosh. And then... So what, what, so, so, uh, when, when are you traveling to Washington then in all of this schedule here? So I will be traveling Thursday. Um, my pacer and I will be driving in um, and then we'll have Friday just to kind of relax and get ready for Saturday. Yeah. What, uh, so what, what's the, uh, what's going on at the event? You know, this is a virtual event. It's going to be live streamed, but what are sort of, the, what sort of the, the day look like? And then when do you guys actually make your world record attempts? Sean, maybe you can answer this better, but I believe it's between nine and 11 a.m. Yeah, that's, I know they're still kind of working. They're going to kind of look at the weather too and see, obviously they don't want the, it to get too hot um, with that. Um, so it's, it's it right now, I think, like you said, somewhere around nine to 11 ish. Um, it's going to kind of be fluid. Uh, they're going to, they're going to have it live streamed on um, the, uh, I think get headstrong. Um, and then any, obviously our personal pages uh, will be able to as well. Um, will not be talking during it <laughs> or, or entertaining at all. Um, but, you know, so they're, they're going to have that. And basically, um, you know, where two years ago, we actually did um, a 5K in the morning and um, where families could come. And then right after the 5K, all the families and, and everybody that participated in the 5K um, actually lined the track um, and, and watched everyone attempt to do it. So this is going to be a little bit different, obviously, with uh, the conditions. So it's going to be um, done over live stream. Hey, Caitlin, uh, I, I don't want to uh, give up all of your secrets, but would 
you know, the, the bomb suit for you, this is part of your T-O-N-E, I guess, with the uh, with your company here. Talk a little bit about the suit and and just tell people about it. You probably know more about it than uh, than most. Yes, yeah, so we will be wearing the EOD 9 bomb suit, which is a total of 84 pounds. The helmet is definitely the worst part. The helmet alone is 12 pounds. So if you think about your standard running form, you have to kind of cater to how heavy this, uh, the helmet is and how the chin straps kind of pulls back your chin. Uh, so it definitely affects your breathing. Um, but it's nice because even though we will all be in the same style bomb suit, it, regardless of what size, each bomb suit has its own personality and it will fit different despite it being the same style. So it's nice that I will be able to bring one that, you know, I get to work with all the time. Um, so I know that bomb suit. So I, it's nice that I get to work with it. I know Sean has had some, some issues trying to get his hands on one. Um, but I think he was able to acquire one. So I did. Yeah. Just, uh, just a couple of weeks ago. So I've only been able to get, um, a couple runs in it. Um, but yeah, definitely, you know, it is, uh, it, it's nice, you know, that the helmet, absolutely is the worst part of that thing um i'm interested uh to know do do you run with the um i don't know what even what you call it but that blast shield up or do you keep it down i keep it down as much as i can away from my face so it won't restrict my breathing okay see i i felt and i feel like and maybe it's just a it's just a mental thing i feel like it does help take some pressure off of my neck when i'm running with it up um, just from, uh, the helmet, um, keeping it, but I don't know. <laughs> Here we go. It's down to technique now. And, and I, I'm assuming Caitlin, that these things come in different sizes because you shared with us before the program, you're all of five feet, five inches tall, right? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so, uh, you know, what, what is it about, uh, I mean, is there something, is the bomb suit restrictive also? I mean, when you're running in it, does it's, it's got to get in the way. It's definitely restrictive um, and compressive on your lungs and your chest. So breathing becomes a lot more difficult. There's zero airflow. So how Sean had mentioned about heat being a factor, if it is real hot and humid, it will definitely play a role in game day. Mm, okay. Hey, uh, you know, so yeah, this, we could, uh, Bob, one thing is, I mean, we could wear, I don't, I don't know how much the extra batteries weigh, but we could wear all the extra batteries and, and turn on the fans. But um, I don't think either of us want any extra weight, but <laughs> how much do the batteries weigh? Oh, geez, probably between an extra five to eight pounds with all the D cell batteries and the hookups and the lines and the pack. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. So it's like the old, as it, they're not like these, uh, these batteries that we used to put in the old radios and so forth, are they? It, it, but it, the thing is, is it'd be basically like putting a fan, you know, outside in the middle of, uh, you know, July here in Virginia, you turn the fan on and it just blows hot air. It's not going to help you at all. So, I mean, are know. there any vents in the suit at all? No, <laughs> I guess that would defeat the purpose, right? Okay. Hey, um, so uh, Caitlin and Sean, uh, I had hoped that my t-shirt was going to arrive, but I'm still anxiously awaiting delivery. Uh, how can people in advance of the event support what you're doing? So the best, I think both of us have on our personal pages have the links um, to the actual shirt page um just because it, it it it's uh but there are links in our bios for uh to take you straight to the checkout uh to get one of the shirts you can use um uh hashtag sean or hashtag katie um in there katie and sean uh and um on the shirt and then uh that way it helps support any any proceeds from the, sh the purchase of the shirt will go to um get headstrong Interesting. So, Kate, uh, Caitlin, uh, Sean promised to sign my shirt if he breaks the world record. Can I get when, the same? When, 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 well, when Sean breaks the world's record, he's going to autograph my T-shirt. I think I'm going to have it framed. How about you? Would you autograph it? Also, maybe we'll auction the thing off for charity. 
I would be honored and humbled. <laughs> okay. Hey, so, um, Caitlin, how does everybody get in touch with and follow you? And Sean, uh, also, we can talk, this is the time to kind of throw out the social media handles and the, uh, and the websites. And obviously, there's a website for the event. And we're going to put all of these things on uh, the show notes page. So you don't need to take notes, but this is the time for the shout out. So my Instagram is katie.m.hernandez, um, either there or Facebook, I'm Katie Marie, or LinkedIn, Caitlin Hernandez. Okay, well, we'll put that, I know people are going to want to follow uh, both of you. How about you, Sean? Uh, Sean.Matson on Instagram, Facebook, um, and same thing for LinkedIn as well, so. Okay. All right. Well, listen, this is this has been a great pleasure for me to get the two of you together, to have the opportunity to kind of uh, conduct the first uh, meeting. But I guess we're, what, 10 days away now uh, from, you know, hopefully breaking two world records here. Uh, I just wish you guys both the very best of luck. I feel confident that you are well prepared for this. I know you're going to do it. Appreciate Thank it, you. Bob. Thanks. So you've been listening to the Spotlight on the Veteran Crowd Network. We bring veterans and veteran-led businesses together with each other and the resources to help them prosper. Very pleased again today to have Captain Caitlin Hernandez and Sean Matson uh, on the program. Thanks so much. I'll put out a big bravo Zulu to you, Caitlin, and to you, Sean, and that's a wrap. Thank you for listening to Spotlight by Veteran Crowd. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information and uploads, please visit our website at veterancrowdnetwork.com. We'll see you next time.